Hi, today I'm going to dig into something that I find to be kind of an interesting topic pertaining to Christianity, and that is something called deconstruction. And what this pertains to is certain Christians have taken it upon themselves uh, to question their faith, to analyze it, to break it down, and then to ultimately decide whether they'd like to stick with it or not. Now recently I've noticed a lot of contemporary Christian singers announcing that they're no longer Christians. As I researched this topic, I found this common thread among many who were abandoning the faith and that they were deconstructing their faith and made a determination that Christianity just wasn't doing it for them. So after further research, it seems like a lot of Christians are trying this process of deconstruction. You can go online, you can go on YouTube, and you can find all sorts of material on how to deconstruct your faith, how to deconstruct Christianity. Seems like a pretty horrible idea, because it just seems like to me it's listening to uh, the voice of the devil himself, but, but I digress. So these, uh, where did this idea come from, and what are the questions that people are asking themselves? I believe this, the gospel really is pretty simple. God sent his son Jesus to die. Jesus died, rose from the dead, he ascended to the Father. We either accept this plan of salvation for our life or we reject it. And I've listened to many deconstruction stories now, and strangely, none of them ever really seem to address the core tenets of Christianity. Uh, additionally, these deconstructors who abandon the faith will usually do so for reasons that are not even related to the gospel. And in virtually every case, the victim of these processes come to the conclusion uh, that they don't need to be Christians using what they deem to be their own brilliant analytical mind. What I want to do in this video is kind of break down how deconstruction happens by talking about my own story, what it looked like for me, sort of a case study. I've broken down my own de deconstruction into nine different parts. I am a very analytical person. I always have been. My personality is one that I am very logical. I never really accept easy answers for things. I always want genuine answers. And so that's just something to keep in mind. It's always a little off-putting to me to hear someone declare themselves to be a very analytical person, a super logical person, a uh, somehow, uh, you know, smarter than the rest of us sort of a being, as though the rest of us don't analyze anything or have no ability to use logic or critical thinking. So I think a lot of times these people get a little bit self-absorbed in thinking that they're the only persons that can come to uh, decisions based on, you know, great, uh, you know, elevated wisdom. Romans 1, 21 and 22 says this, Because when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves wise, they became fools. And I think as we go through this analysis of this video, I think we're going to see that. Unfortunately, this young lady who once professed to be a Christian decided to make a video for Christians who might also want to become apostate. Now, I'm using this video as the young lady labeled it a case study. I figured that since it's a case study, well, we should be able to use that for analytical and scientific purposes. That's what a case study is for. And this is a case study of deconstruction. Our subject in the case study graduated with a degree in psychology from a Christian college. So let's start there. Yes. So stage one of my deconstruction was definitely going to college. I went to a small Christian liberal arts college. And yes, it was Christian. It was conservative. But college played a huge role in teaching me how to think critically. I majored in psychology with a minor in theology, and these two classes combined really challenged me to ask tough questions. I would submit that college may be one of the most damaging institutions to young Christians, and also young people in general, as it seems to only teach them things that don't make any sense and, uh, and tend to destroy their own lives. You would think a Christian college would be a safe place, but this young person's life was shipwrecked at the hands of apostate college theologians. 
This, I think there's going to be a special place in hell for such wolves in sheep clothing. This young lady's video has over 180,000 views. I pray that it doesn't guide other young people to a decision that has eternal consequences. Her second reason in this case study is a trip to Cambodia. Apparently before that, she wasn't aware of history's many uh, genocidal atrocities, and it was only, you know, and when she became a Christian, I guess she must not have known these things, as this impacts her belief in God. I'll only say that God created people with a free will, and sadly the Hitler types out there have abused their free will. We can't assign blame to God for the evils of man. If he stripped free will, we would all have to just be robots, and there would be no point in us being here at all. Her takeaway was that uh, her question was, where was God in all of this? And of course, that is an age-old question, but the truth is that this life is going to be very short in the scheme of eternity. It doesn't matter if we come to a horrifying end or if we live uh, peacefully until we're 90 years old. The fact of the matter is this is going to be a tiny blip on the radar of eternity, and that's something we need to keep in mind. And as bad as some events are, they have no impact whatsoever on God's plan of salvation, which is the actual crux of Christianity to begin with. Now, she went on with a third reason to abandon the faith, and that was a disappointment in her first job. She sought this job, she prayed for it, and the job was working as a mental health tech at a psychiatric hospital, and she believed this was God's will for her life to do this. Now, this seems like to me for no biblical reason that she thought this would be God's plan is psychiatry and Christianity are pretty much diametrically opposed. I'm not going to say there's no value in psychiatry at all, but I will say that it sets itself up as an alternative to believing in God in many cases. So she quit this job after her first day, and the reason uh, was that she just didn't feel like it was God's plan for her life. Well, she was probably right there. I, I don't understand her takeaway there in this uh, starting to eat away at her uh, belief system, but it, she said that that was one of her reasons. Now, um, so after she quit, uh, then the next thing that happened to her was she had a failed relationship with a boyfriend, and, and I guess apparently she must blame God for this, and now she is well on her uh, road to just falling away. So her fifth reason that she gave was, well, she fell into a depression. Well, you know, the job didn't work out, the boyfriend didn't work out, so naturally you're not going to feel too happy about that. But where do you turn? But she didn't. She didn't turn to any mentors. She didn't try to seek out any help from mature Christians. All she did was just kind of blame God for everything. And so she's really on this path to giving it up. But the, the thing of it is, you know, we're given the entire book of the Bible, the book of Job, to see that tribulations are going to befall people, even the very best of people and the most righteous of people. It's, it's you know, it just gonna, things are just going to happen. Jesus said there'd be tribulation, but he said he's overcome this world, and so we just have to understand that uh, no matter what happens, that God is still in control. We tend to make ourselves too big in the, in the scheme of things. So, in this entire video for 22 minutes, this girl never turned to a pastor, a Christian mentor, or a confidant that could actually help her. And she moved on to this stage six uh, of, her, uh, of her just tearing down her faith. And this was getting into what she calls a Christian group, but she said they were all just like her in the Valley of Decision, and all of them very much doubting their Christianity. So I don't call that a Christian group at all. I call that a support group for backsliders, because that's really all that was. And this group helped to her to affirm her belief that maybe Christianity isn't real. So her stage seven was a new boyfriend, who she ended up later marrying, and she met him at this disgraceful Christian college that she went to. He helped affirm her belief that Christianity is a repressive system meant to stifle a person's life. And uh, from everything I gather in the video, it just sounded like they uh, wanted to live life any way they wanted to and did not want to be constrained by any uh, holy living whatsoever. So then, you know, the final step, she... Uh, well, she now she had another stage of eight. She found an online life coach who helped guide her into her newfound unbelief. He explained what deconstruction was, and now that it had a name, 
you know, she was really excited about it. And I guess that's kind of from her psychiatry background. You know, she wanted to be able to label something, something. So she la then able to label this as deconstructing uh, Christianity. And this seemed to be a big revelation to her. Um, I found it kind of odd that I, I, I looked at other videos on her channel and this guy died shortly thereafter. And, uh, hey, I'm not going to attribute that to uh, God striking the guy dead, but I don't know, maybe God struck the guy dead. Who knows? But uh, this life coach did explain uh, all these things to her and helped convince her that she needed to turn away from Christianity. And then she found that her final step was finding all these other people online and YouTubers who had also abandoned the faith. You can find plenty of these stories on there. And so um, she uh, is now past the final stage and has decided that she's going to denounce Christ. Now, before choosing to deconstruct your faith, you need to understand exactly what you're debunking. Uh, this person used a process of analyzing her life, her life experiences, and she came to the conclusion that Christianity wasn't true based on the things that had happened to her. Her college professors chipped away at her faith with enticing words of man's wisdom, so-called. My theology professors and philosophy professors especially always were trying to push students to to rethink all of the right answers we've been told about God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and salvation. Did they disprove Jesus' life as death or resurrection? No. They simply used the devil's age-old tactics from the Garden of Eden. Her realization that bad things happened to innocent people, it didn't negate God's plan of salvation in any way. Jesus said there'd be tribulation. The rest of this poor girl's deconstruction came from her dissatisfaction with life and later from affirmation from other people who also were dissatisfied with their life. Now, she gave up her salvation, but not on the type of hard-hitting uh, analytical evidence that you would expect you know, from her after professing to be such a keen, brilliant mind, but rather based on her disappointment in how her life was playing out. If you want to question your faith, at least go to the core tenets of the Bible and the, and the primary doctrines. History proves Jesus' existence. Over 500 people witnessed the ascension, enough to verify any historical fact. If he rose from the dead like he said he would, anyone should be convinced that his plan is the only plan worth considering. So that's what I have to say about deconstruction. Uh, my apologies to that poor girl whose uh, whose video I used, but the fact of the matter is when she's a, you know, a, a college graduate who's calling this a case study, a case study should be there for everyone to use and to learn from. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll make sure that you have the ability to go to and see that entire video because uh, I want you know her whole story to be told if you'd like to hear it. And I hope you have a great day. I uh, will talk to you in a while.